In April 2021, the US Defense Department released video footage of three separate incidents of strange objects flying around US military jets and naval ships. They called these objects Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, or UAPs. We might call them Unidentified Flying Objects, or UFOs. The spokesperson for the Pentagon uh, wouldn't be drawn on what these UAPs are where they come from, nor why they might be here. All the Pentagon spokesperson would say is, the Department of Defense is releasing the videos in order to clear up any misconceptions by the public on whether or not the footage that has been circulating was real or whether or not there is more to the videos. The aerial phenomenon observed in the videos remains characterized as unidentified. Now, if the US defense spokesperson had tried to say anything more about the UAPs, such as what they are, where they came from, or why they're here, they would have been wading deep into the debate about the difference between speculation and hypothesis. If they commented more than they did, we would have asked whether their explanation was solely speculative, and if they said no, we'd want to know upon what evidence they were developing their explanation, and so on. And there we may have one of the key differences between speculation and hypothesis. But of course, talk essay number four is not about what the differences between speculation and hypothesis are. It's actually about whether such differences are significant. And that's what we're going to look at today on talk today. Welcome to TOK Today. I'm Daniel, and today we're going to look at essay number four, November 24, whether the differences between speculation and hypothesis are actually significant. Now, if you're unclear about the key terms, hypothesis and speculation, then make sure to watch our CTB, Covering the Basics video, for this prompt, which is linked above. In this video, we're going to jump straight into the question whether those differences are significant. And if you want detailed help and guidance on this essay, then make sure that you pick up the TOK Today essay guidance notes for this title from the Talk Today website, link in the video description. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that some students will make with this essay is that they will put definitions of hypothesis and speculation into the introductory section of the essay. Now, the definitions of these terms is going to be key to saying whether the difference between them is significant. Therefore, I recommend developing definitions of these terms as part of the knowledge arguments that you develop specifically for each AOK. Now, if you want to know what to put in the introduction to a TOK essay, watch the Top Today video titled Writing an Effective Introduction for Your TOK Essay, which I'll link above. Okay, let's get straight into a knowledge argument and real-life example for this essay title. And we're going to look at AOK -OK Human Sciences, and we're going to explore the knowledge argument that we disagree that there is no significant difference between speculation and hypothesis in the human sciences if the observation is clearly grounded in evidence. Now, this seems like a fairly straightforward knowledge argument one that most students writing this essay will arrive at fairly soon in their process of writing. Speculation in the human sciences is not based on the evidence found in the observations and questions of knowledge producers. Hypothesis in the human sciences, on the other hand, could be said to be developed from both the observations and questions of knowledge producers and pre-existing knowledge models, research and theory. That's the straightforward bit. But then there's the more challenging bit, which is actually the focus of this essay prompt. Is this difference significant? So the question requires us to consider whether it is significant, whether an observation is developed from evidence or developed from personal subjectivities, such as experience, intuition, or even imagination. In order to do that, we're going to have to explore some of the different ways in which we could classify a difference as significant. 
Now, in this video, I only have time to give you an overview of the sort of arguments that you could use to say that a difference is significant. But if you want more detailed explanations and examples, then pick up the Talk Today guidance essay notes, and uh, they're linked in the video description. They've got knowledge arguments, real-life examples, evaluation points, implication points, all of the things that you need to get a great score on the TOK essay. They're 8,000 words long. They're like a mini textbook just for this essay. You know what to do. Okay, well, let's look at three of the main ways that we could decide whether a difference is significant or not. Number one, we could say that a difference is significant if it changes the knowledge subsequently produced. If use of speculation leads to the production of different knowledge than use of hypothesis, then we have a serious and significant difference. Secondly, we could argue that a difference is significant if it changes the subject or object of knowledge production. So this is not just a change in the knowledge produced, but it's also a change in who produces it and how they produce it. Finally, we could argue that a difference is significant if it changes the purpose or intention of the knowledge producer. If the knowledge producer would have one intention using hypothesis, but a different intention by using speculation, then we can argue that that difference is significant. Now, obviously these are just very broad ways of defining significance. They're intended to give you a way into the main focus of this essay, exploring what makes a difference significant. Obviously there are other ways of defining significance. For example, you may want to consider the origins of the observation, the values underpinning the observation, the perspective framing the observation, and so on and so on. There are, there are lots of different ways of exploring these terms. The key thing is, is that the essay is primarily concerned with what makes one difference significant, whilst another difference may not be significant. So, back to our original knowledge argument. Let's just remind ourselves of that knowledge argument. We disagree that there is no significant difference between speculation and hypothesis in the human sciences if the observation is clearly grounded in evidence. And we're going to demonstrate that the use of evidence makes the difference between hypothesis and speculation significant because the use of evidence to form the hypothesis can change the knowledge produced. That was uh, number one of our reasons why differences might be significant. Uh, the real-life example that I'm going to briefly talk about here is Barr and Williams' 2006 research into the priming of social distance from psychology. Now, briefly, their hypothesis that physical sensations could subconsciously influence social judgments and behaviour was grounded in the evidence from pre-existing psychological theories, and it suggested that abstract concepts like social distance and physical sensations are interlinked in the, bra in the brain. Most speculative observations at this time suggested that social distance was more of a function of social values rather than physical stimuli. So we have this difference between the speculation and the hypothesis, which is based on evidence. Now, their research showed how hypotheses based on solid evidence can lead to knowledge of human cognition and social interaction that would not have been produced, constructed, realised if their research had been based on speculation alone. As such, we are arguing that the use of evidence to form hypothesis is a significant difference to speculation in which evidence may not be used because it can change the knowledge produced. <laughs> Obviously, I'm summarising for the purpose of this video. I'm just trying to show you one of the many ways into this title. And you would have to go into a lot more detail explaining terms and differentiating between the use of evidence in hypothesis as opposed to subjective biases in speculation. Uh, and let me stress again that this is just one of many, many different knowledge arguments that could be used for this essay. So don't feel like you have to write this one because... This is the one I've included in this video. Examples of other knowledge arguments and real-life examples that could be used for this essay are in the 
TOK Today essay guidance notes. Link in the video description. Okay, let's quickly look at a couple of the evaluation and implication points that could be developed for this knowledge argument. Firstly, we can question the premise that hypotheses are grounded in evidence while speculation is based on subjective and therefore biased observation. The evidence that hypotheses is based on could be the observations of the researcher, which makes them very similar to the subjective biases of speculation. Maybe the evidence base of hypotheses are observations that are influenced by prior research evidence or theory. Now, it could be argued that the use of prior research evidence reduces the subjectivity of the observations used for hypotheses. However, there is still a degree of interpretation by the researcher uh, of those observations and that evidence. Further, the prior research upon which the observations is based was not necessarily designed for the research or the knowledge that it's now being used. Uh, and this, this means that there's still interpretation. Uh, the implication, and you need implications to get a high mark, the implications of this evaluation point could be that the evidence base of hypotheses may be even less relevant and therefore less significant than the subjective biases of speculation. Secondly, we could argue that the use of a pre-existing evidence base to inform hypotheses leads to the production of knowledge that further consolidates existing knowledge. And this existing knowledge is the same knowledge that constitutes the subjective frameworks that inform speculation. As such, there may be less significance in the role of evidence in the difference between hypothesis and speculation. Now, the implication of this evaluation point is that designing research that significantly breaks with previously held assumptions may be more likely to produce genuinely new knowledge regardless of whether speculation or hypothesis is used. And we could go on and on developing these evaluation points, but I think you've got the idea and you've graciously given me more than enough of your time today. Now, if you want to know more about how to write evaluation points, check out the Talk Today video, Evaluation and TOK Essays, linked above. Hopefully from this overview video, you get some ideas for how to approach this essay. There are, of course, many, many other ways to develop this essay, some of which we go into in a lot more detail in the Talk Today essay guidance notes, link in the video description. Thank you for watching and remember to hit like and subscribe if you've got value from today's video. Talk Today has videos for all of the other TOK essay titles and for many of the TOK exhibition titles. So tell your friends, spread the good TOK word and stay talktastic, my friends. Bye.